Good morning, Will Schweller here to walk you through the fine art highlights in Clark Auction's March 6th sale. We'll start here with this really lovely oil on canvas double portrait by the English artist Ian Grant. Grant was a uh, society painter known for, for his portraits and here we've got two figures walking through uh, presumably industrial London. I really love the juxtaposition here between this sort of, um, you know, almost bleak background and the really vibrant floral pattern on the male figure's shirt as well as, as the woman's blouse here. Uh, the costuming on these figures is really great. And if you look at the back of the canvas, there are images in our online catalog. There's actually the sketch for another portrait. This work comes from a, from a local collection and we're offering it with a six to $900 estimate. It's one of my favorites in the sale, really fun painting. Above it, we've got a great drawing by the extremely important American artist, Stuart Davis. Davis, most known for, for his modernist works, uh, did a number of drawings in the early 20th century. This is probably circa 1917. Uh, of village landscapes. This is a really excellent example uh, thereof. It uh, again comes from another local collection and it's being offered with a three to $5,000 estimate. Popping down the wall here, we have a, a interesting work, one of two drawings by the Italian born Mexican based artist, Domenico Zendato. It's done here on paper. And what we have is you know, almost psychedelic abstract featuring these repeated sort of animal figural motifs throughout, uh, a bit reminiscent of both Aboriginal Australian art as well as some of the you know, visionary shamanic art you see coming out of, out of like Amazonian cultures. It's a really vibrant piece. Like I said, one of two, we're gonna take a look at the second here in just a second. Presents so well on the wall, really vibrant, really interesting, something you could stare at for hours. It's being sold with a two to $3,000 estimate. Below it, also with a two to $3,000 estimate, we have this great illustration by the American artist and illustrator, John Held Jr., uh, known for his, his magazine work, as well as some cartoons here. We've got a really funny scene of golfers, all sorts of comic mishaps taking place on the golf course. Perfect for anyone interested in, in golf. Comes out of a local collection. And like I'd mentioned uh, at the top, being sold with a two to $3,000 estimate. To its left, we have you know, one of the great mysteries of the sale. This painting came in during our walk-in Wednesday um, and the consigner claims their parents purchased it in the village in the 1970s and they think the artist was African-American. We've not been able to match it to anybody, uh, but it's a really fantastic work here, mixed media with this tremendously thick, masterfully applied impasto on the canvas, uh, sort of a triple portrait here, you know, with this rightmost figure being abstracted and this, like, gouge in the paint for a mouth. It is signed. I don't know if the video is going to pick it up terribly well. It's really hard to photograph. Up here in the lower right, there appears to be some letters, possibly an N and a C. Like I said, we've not been able to figure out who the artist is, but it's a really fantastic work. Um, certainly got, got the age to suggest it is from the 60s, 70s. We're selling it with a $1,000 to $1,500 estimate. I've really enjoyed looking at it here, and I, I certainly wish I knew who it was. Above it, we've got uh, a really charming piece by a perennial favorite, Henry Mike, Henri Mike rather, a French artist known for his naive landscapes and animal paintings. Here we've got a, a winter scene with, or autumnal scene with bears preparing for hibernation, really charmingly depicted down there in the lower right or lower left as well as, as a bird here. This also came in actually during one of our walk-in Wednesdays from a, a New York collection, and we're selling it with a two to $3,000 estimate. Really great colors. Here we have the second of those Domenico Zendato drawings. Again, really vibrant, interesting kind of psychedelic work here. I think the pink tones are really tremendous. Just overall, the palette is, is quite synchronistic. Everything really works well together. A really excellent drawing. Like the other one being sold with a two to $3,000 estimate. And below it, we have one of the, the highlights of the sale. A painting on plexiglass by the Italian uh, neo Dada artist Gianfranco Baruccello. The work's from 1966 and is titled Unexplored Overcoat, comes from a local area collection. And it was an excellent example of Baruccello's uh, works on plexiglass. The video here will show you it's a three dimensional piece. There are layers to the paint here, I think kind of two to three actually. So there's a nice depth to the work. And it's like much of Baruccello's work from the period in that it sort of resembles architectural sketches. 
Uh, I think there's a bit of ambiguity there. It's, it's clearly not a draft for anything in particular, um, but a lot of these forms you know, seem to suggest annotation or, or movement. He's clearly looking at, at, uh, at you know, draftsmanship and blueprints. Really fascinating work. Quite important uh, from the 1960s, which is the artist's real, real peak. We're selling it with a six to nine thousand dollar estimate. Moving right along, we've got another really great painting here. This by the American social realist Raphael Sawyer, of a woman, uh, you know, attending to herself at a vanity. I think it's interesting. A lot of the Sawyer works present the models face on, but here we're of course looking at the back of the female figure. The flesh tones are, are done quite well. Um, and we've got the sort of trademark Sawyer brown and tan palette. The work comes out of a Long Island collection it's being sold with a three to $5,000 estimate. Above it, we've got a second Stuart Davis drawing, again, another village scene, this from 1917, comes from the same collection as the first, also being sold with a three to $5,000 estimate. Really excellent opportunity for a collector to own a work on paper by, by one of the major names in, in American pre-war modernism. Great piece. Popping to the other side of the office, we've got a nice etching by Mark Chagall titled Prophecy Over Jerusalem. Comes from a collection down in Queens, number 82 from an edition of 100. And, you know, shows Chagall handling biblical subject matter, being sold with a 15 to $2,500 estimate. Above it, we've got another uh, great American painting, this by Ben Ben, the important American modernist. Uh, this work is an oil on board from 1928, depicts figures on the coast. It also came in during one of our walk-in Wednesdays. Um, it's one of two Ben Ben paintings in the sale, and this particular piece is being sold with a $15 to $2,500 estimate. Moving to the other side of the gallery here, we've got a really interesting assemblage of paintings including a nice pair, you'll see the other one in just a second here, of Victorian bird's nest paintings. Unsigned, but really excellently painted. Above it, from a local Larchmont collection just around the way, a great lithograph by the Russian-born American precisionist artist uh, Louis Lazowick, here of the George Washington Bridge, titled Hudson Bridge. Uh, it's being sold with a $15 to $2,500 estimate. It's a really great example of Lazowick's printed work, which depicts New York City in such a heroic way. This is from 1929. Above it, we've got another bird's nest painting, this by the English artist Oliver Clare. Came from a collection over in Jersey. And I believe it's being sold with a $400 to $600 estimate. To the left of the Clare, we've got one of my favorite paintings in the sale, a really expertly painted English portrait of a woman in Italian dress. Uh, we don't know who the artist or sitter are. There is a partial label on the back of the painting that says, you know, portrait of Mrs. and then the, the sheet is sliced. So unfortunately, that remains anonymous. But it's really expertly painted from the face here, you know, to her pearl earrings. And I'm really quite captivated by the black lace work here along her dress. It's a really fantastic portrait. Came in during one of our walk-in Wednesdays. It's being offered with 1000 to 1500 uh, dollar estimate. I think it's one of the nicer, you know, anonymous portraits we've had in many months. Above it, we've got a really great Flemish painting, oil on panel of the Madonna, uh, child in St. John the Baptist, surrounded by flowers. Came out of a collection in Rye, uh, purchased in Christie's back in the 80s or 90s. It's being sold with an eight to twelve hundred dollar estimate. Really nice old master painting there. Down here to their lower left is the second of the two bird's nest paintings. These are being sold as a grouping. I really love the, the blue in those eggshells there. Above it, we've got another one of the highlight works in the sale, a Central Park scene, uh, mixed media sort of gouache uh, predominantly by the Russian artist Boris Grigorev, who is known for his modernist painting in the first half of the 20th century, uh, worked in Russia, spent a lot of time in Paris, but also lived in New York, which is how we're getting this Central Park scene here, I believe Central Park South. Really excellent drawing, uh, capturing you know, the harmony of, of Central Park with the rows of, of apartment complexes. Really great work from the, the 1930s. Came again from a local Larchmont collection and we're offering it with a ten to $15,000 estimate. Above it is a print that came in during one of our Walk-In Wednesday appraisal days. A really excellent Whistler etching titled En Plein Soleil. Work was done in a number of different states. This particular one done on a tan chincolet. 
It's a really great example of Whistler's printed work. Uh, this particular edition is, is rather rare, so, so it doesn't really come up at auction quite often. We're offering it with a two to three thousand dollar estimate. Next to it, we've got one of two. We'll see the second again in just a minute here. Uh, European school paintings depicting Putti in a garden, really charming decorative pieces, has nice age, offered uh, as a pair with a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars as the estimate. To their left, we've got a charming uh, small but mighty hunt Slonum. Slonum uh, features quite regularly in our preview videos, known for his um, impressionistic painting of birds and, and animals. Here we've got a number of songbirds, really great little piece with a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar estimate. To its left we have a fantastic French school 19th century portrait coming from a local collection, really impressive size and scale. And again like that English portrait we're getting both really expert depictions of flesh in the face and the curled hair here, some of which is lost a bit to the background, could be brightened up a bit with a cleaning perhaps, as well as just fantastic detail work on the sitter's garment. I love these flowers on the border. And even the pearl, the pearl uh, bracelet there is really well done. Like that English portrait we just looked at, we don't know the artist or the sitter, but it's a really fantastic period portrait being offered with a two to $3,000 estimate. Up above it, we've got a nice Victorian painting of a terrier <laughs> with a dead rat. Really charming portrait of a dog for any animal lovers there. And then to wrap up in this front gallery, we've got the second of the two paintings of Putti. Again, as a pair being offered with a thousand to $1,500 estimate. Here in the main gallery, you'll see we've got a really interesting mix of works this month. We've got a nice painting of nudes by the Italian artist Carlo Monti, a really colorful woodcut by Carol Summers favorite of mine. We have a group lot of four lithographs by Georgia O'Keeffe. Here are three. The fourth is unframed and included with the, the slip cover and paperwork for the portfolio. We've got a really interesting, you know, minimalist or hard edge painting here by an artist named Donald Hendricks from the 1970s. Prints by Dolly, Jim Dine, Fritz Shoulder up above. A really interesting work here uh, that you might want to get a sense of the scale of that came out of a local Larchmont collection. A really interesting abstract painting featuring the sort of drips of paint from 1971. It's illegibly signed. We have images on the catalog uh, of the signature on the back. It's dated 1971, a really interesting large scale abstract from the 70s. We've got a great oil on canvas by the artist Przinsky, Thomas Przinsky, known for his Paris and Venice scenes. Here we have a work to Toria Pinocchio from Venice, the sort of photorealist cityscapes. Above it, an offset lithograph by Robert Vickery titled The Red Truck. We've got a number of works by Lucien Grand Girard. Uh, we have a grouping of three smaller landscapes as well as this large scale painting. As well as this work here, which the consigner told me came from the estate of Ernest Hemingway, but there is no, no paperwork or anything to back that up. But regardless, it's an interesting window painting here on this sort of constructed wooden frame. This is a really well done European landscape. It's unsigned, but quite nice. And above it from Walk-In Wednesday, we've got a Paul von Ravenstein, a German artist who paints, uh, painted in the late 19th century, really excellent landscape works. Here from a collection out on the island, we've got a really large scale work by the American artist Charles Miller depicting a coastal landscape. What I think makes this painting particularly special is this double rainbow here coming in from the right hand side of the painting. The work would certainly benefit from a cleaning and I think once brightened up would be really fantastic. I mean, you'll get some of the pigments here in these rainbows. It makes for a really special landscape. We've got a lot of nice seascapes here, some American works. as well as this rather funky painting, signed W. Turner from the late 19th century, depicting a mythological scene. Another one that came in during our walk in Wednesdays, proving to be quite, quite fertile for some interesting works. Here, a nice old portrait of Mary Magdalene, contemplating the crown of thorns. We've got a nice, probably 20th century copy after Rembrandt. This work, uh, the original, of course, hanging in the Met. 
a nice painting by an artist named Jerome depicting a woman at the uh, Chardin de Luxembourg, or the Palais de Luxembourg rather, and a nice Louis Rittman portrait here, rather contemplative piece. Which brings us to one of the really exciting lots in the sale from a collection out on Long Island. We have this painting of the infant savior uh, attributed to Murillo. It's a really excellent period painting uh, of a subject matter uh, Murillo handled before here, the infant Christ with, with the orb symbolizing the world, sort of the Salvator Mundi, but as an infant, so it gets called the infant savior. This work has this marvelous hand carved wooden frame on it. It's a really stunning package. And on the back of the frame, there's a label for Ferris C. Pitt, who was an early 20th century picture dealer in Baltimore, handled old master paintings and worked with a lot of important collectors at the time. We were able to trace this work back to the collection of Mr. and Mrs. Walter Oakman. Oakman was a late 19th, early 20th century railroad tycoon and ultimately a banker in New York, had an important mansion out in Roslyn um, on Long Island that no longer exists. So this was in his collection, auctioned off and acquired by Pitt. And then the work was sold in the 1920s um, from Pitt's collection at auction and sort of been, been lost. The trail has been lost. Um, so we have it as attributed to Maria. We don't know for certain if it is by him, but it's certainly done in the artist's style at the period. Really excellent painting being offered with a three to $5,000 estimate. It's been a real treat to work with. And I'm excited to see where it goes. We're gonna wrap up here with, with two of my favorite works in the sale, starting with this painting by the American artist Lowell Nesbitt. Nesbitt's known for working in a really large scale like this, painted a lot of irises, but what we have here is a nice Florida scene uh, depicting the Everglades with some alligators uh, in the sun and water. Really excellent work. Comes from a, an area collection. It's being sold with a six to $900 estimate. Perfect for anyone interested in, in Florida scenes which, you know, somewhat rare to come on the market. I think it's a really fun, whimsical work. And I think presents quite well here, hanging in the gallery. And especially if it were to pick up some natural light, it would really pop. A really fantastic work. And we'll conclude here with, with perhaps the highlight of the fine art section of the sale. An extremely fascinating mixed media construction in a box by the German uh, conceptual artist, Mary Bauermeister. This work is from 1966 and is titled Top Straws. And what we have here is this constructed box featuring you know, a number of straws, as well as a drawing on the back of the box. And sort of what Bauermeister was really interested in in the mid 60s, these glass lenses on the surface of the work and in, within the, the glass box that really catch the light in an interesting way, magnify certain elements of the drawing and, and the, just the construction in general to create a really fascinating, fascinating work. Bauermeister is associated with the Fluxus movement, was creating work both in Germany and in New York in the 1960s. And, and constructions like this are extremely sought after, particularly from this period. We're just gonna slip this over here. It's lot 95 in the sale, as our tag indicates, but we see here titled, dated, and signed on the back of the work. Comes out of a Greenwich collection, being offered with a 10 to $15,000 estimate. It's a really excellent example, like I said, uh, for collectors to, to acquire a work from, from Bauermeister's really prized period, the late 1960s. As always, really just scratch the surface of the sale. We've got about 125 fine art lots this month, so please do check out our catalog online. Uh, and we've already started putting together our April 3rd sale. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at the gallery. Thank you.